You know, I got on this trip, I said, Lord, what, I want some profound revelation. Uh, you know, I need to come up with some profound revelation for this, these people on these trips because, you know, uh, I really don't have any pro I'm not a profound revelation. But how many know profound revelation is going back with the basic things? Right. Because we forget about them sometimes. Right. Yeah. And I started studying this. I just picked up a book and was reading about it. And I thought, man, this is such a powerful. When I first when I first got into this, I got so excited and zealous yeah. about this, you know. And I want you to get excited tonight. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. <laughs> and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils. They speak, shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They'll, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken to them, he is received up into heaven and set at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with him and confirming the word of science following. Amen. Yes. Now I want you to notice something about this. How many know that the original <coughs> language that it was, this was written in was English? And the, they, you know, when they translate the Bible over, they put these, you know, I'm, not, I'm certainly I'm not an English scholar, you can tell that. I don't, I don't even know, you know, I don't even know where to put commas. I'm trying to, you know, Facebook tries to help me and it gives up the ghost. It can't even help me. Spell check. A lot of times I try to get close enough to where it's the right word is going. Not yet. But I do believe that there's something called commas, semicolons, different things, right? Okay. Well, you know, it, and they put them in there to try to help us understand what's going on. But sometimes it kind of goofs it up, you know. Now, here's one of those places. I want to read this verse again. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, verse 17 again. Now, notice this. Read this with me. Look at this. And, they, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's the way it should read. Now, the way it reads, if you read it the English way, is, is these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You know, so. But let's do it this way. <coughs> and these signs shall follow them that have faith in my name. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Yeah. Believe in his name. Right. Believe in his name. Right. Believe in his name. Yeah. Yeah. Believe that there was a name above every name. Believe in his name. Yes, right. Understand his power in the name. Yes. Understand the authority in his name. Yes. Study about the authority in his name. Believe that authority. Yes. Now, see, that's what he's saying. These signs shall follow them that have faith in his name. Right. Amen. <coughs> hey, the Bible says there's no other, there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. We'll go to that scripture. The name of Jesus is above every name. Amen. And in that name is everything that God possesses. In that name is all the authority of God himself. In that name is who he is. You can't separate him from his name. Yeah. In that name, when you use that name, it's like and, and when you use that to take authority over something in the name of Jesus, it's like taking the entire word of God and all the promises at one time and slapping the devil right in the face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I wish I could believe that. Well, he just told us that's what we need to do. Yeah. We need to believe that. Yeah. There's all authority in that name, all power in that name. How much? Well, how much authority and how much power does Almighty God have? Yeah. But the interesting thing is we have been given this thing. Yeah. This wonderful name. Let's go over to Acts chapter 4 since I went off and, and, and already said it. But this is a great scripture. Acts chapter 4. Think about this. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures. There's a lot of scriptures. Let's go down through the New Testament and, and see where it talks about the name. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Here's one. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other uh, name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen. That's not very politically correct. A lot of churches today tell you to be saved. You know, we have the same God, all the Muslims and everybody, we have the same God. And so, you know, hey, choose whatever you want. You know, many paths lead to the same place. Let's not get all technical about it. But here, the Word of God says, there's only one name whereby you must be saved. Amen. One name. His name is Jesus. That's it. 
There is no other name. You don't come that way, you don't come at all. In fact, John chapter 14, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken, says this. And I know we're turning a lot, but that's okay. It's a good Bible study. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to me, the Father, except through me. No man comes to the Father except through me. It doesn't make any difference what else you believe. You will not get to the Father except through that name, except through Jesus Christ. Amen. No man does. Amen. It doesn't matter what you believe. You can try to change that fact. You can try to preach against that fact. You can try to believe it away. But the truth is, there is only one way, and His name is Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter how politically correct you try to be, there is still only one name. Amen. Amen. In heaven and earth, whereby men must be saved. And that's the wonderful name of Jesus. You can just sense something happens in the heavenly realm when you say, Jesus. Yes. You can sense the angels or, or there's something happens when we when we express the, the name of Jesus. You can see them in the spirit realm. Their knees will bow. There's a holy reverence that the church just doesn't seem to have sometimes. Wow. Mm -hmm. They understand about that wonderful name. They see the power there is yes. when the saint gets on his knees or her knees mm -hmm. and begins to say, Oh, Father, I come to you. In that name. Yeah. In fact, let's talk about that for a second. Look at John chapter 14 since we're there. Glory to God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I got some goosebumps. I don't go by goosebumps, but they're fun to have. I don't walk by goosebumps, but I like a few of them. Especially if you've been through a stressful time. A few goosebumps will get you good. Amen. John chapter 14, verse 13. Oh, man. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Really interesting scripture, because it really doesn't say ask. It means more demand. Let's read it that way. It says, and whatsoever you shall demand in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall demand anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah. Now we're not demanding that from God, but we're demanding that from the devil. We're demanding our rights and privileges of yeah. what that name possesses, what Jesus did for us. Yes. When we say in the name of Jesus, be healed, we are demanding what has already been bought for us by the precious yeah. blood of the Lord Jesus Amen. and His resurrection power. Yeah. So powerful. Think of this. The name. It's that name. It's that name. It's that name. John chapter 16. Then there's prayer. I still from time to time hear your hearts praying to Jesus. I don't want to get all like, you know, legalistic about that. I understand people are growing in different things. It's all right to talk to Jesus. But Jesus told us, don't, don't ask anything. Don't ask me anything. Ask the Father in the name. There's a reason for that. I'll explain it. John chapter 16, verse 22. And you now therefore have sorrow, but I... See, did I get this right? Yes. Okay. And you now therefore have, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart, heart shall rejoice, and your joy uh, no man will take from you. And in that day you shall ask me what? Nothing. Ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Up till now, you've asked nothing in my name, asking you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Amen. He says, and he says, listen, up till now, you've asked nothing. He says, but now, when I go to that cross, I'm paraphrasing, when I die, and I, and I take the keys of death, hell, and grave away from the devil, and I bought back, praise God, your redemptive rights and privileges as a child of God. All that has been done. He said, whatever you, when you get down on your knees, he says, you don't come to me and ask me. He says, you ask the Father in yeah. my name. Why? 
Because the yeah. second we say, in the name of Jesus, that yeah. prayer goes out of our hands and goes into God's hands. It goes into, it, it, it's just as if Jesus prayed that prayer himself. This is why we need to begin to understand. Because sometimes we just don't have enough faith, maybe, or understanding to understand how it's all going to happen. But when you, when you have faith... That God takes that prayer. Jesus is the one who really is now presenting that prayer. Takes that prayer and presents it before the Father. Then you really don't need to know anything other than that. Right? Amen. Yeah. Did you guys get what I just said? Yeah. Amen. One more time. It's a legal proposition, basically. Yeah. What you're doing is you're, is you're coming before the Father. You're saying, I'm not coming out of my own strength, my own power, my own goodness. My own, I, mean, I, count the, I count the 10 needs this morning. I should be good. <laughs> you know, or whatever other <laughs> people do. Said three uh, Hail Marys and a, you know, two archangels and a whatever it is. I should be good. No, 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 no. We don't come on our own. We come through that wonderful name. He's the one who did what we could never do. Yes. And we say in the name of Jesus, and God says, hey, as far as I'm concerned, that's just as if my son prayed that prayer. Amen. Amen. Ask shall receive that your joy may be full. I don't know about you, but I'm blessed already. Amen. Now, come over here. You really want to shout? How many want to shout tonight? Hallelujah. Look over to Matthew chapter 18. Let's shout a little bit over this. I better put my glasses on. You know, it's weird being this. You know, you get a little older. Brother Hayden used to say it this way the older I get, the longer my arms go. The truth of the matter is, for me, it's like it's it's like every time you know, I'm looking at you guys, and I put I put my glasses on here and I read the scripture, and if I look up, it looks like the '60s. <laughs> it's like I had a flashback.
that it shall, uh, they ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Now notice, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together, in my name there am I. Yes. In my name there am I. Yes. In my name there am I. Yes. Amen. Now, I don't think you got it. In my name there am I. Yes. Hallelujah. He's here in the name. He's here in the name. Yes. So when we pray for somebody in that name, it's just as if Jesus Christ was praying. That's right. Why? Because it's not us who gets the job, but it's Him. That's right. We're all concerned about having enough faith and this and that. But you see, really, it's that name that does it. Amen. There's power in that name. Even, even in the Bible, we see it over and over. They understood this. Because to the Jewish uh, uh, people, names meant something. And, and these, these, these early disciples, this kid was at the forefront of their thinking. You can tell. Because of some of the scriptures we'll read. Let's look at another scripture here. Uh, in fact, let's just do that now because I want to I want to go a different way. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Just real quick. Colossians. <coughs> these are things we should know. I said these are things we should know. We should, we should keep these at the forefront of our thinking. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed. Huh? Yeah. Think about that. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed. How many know that pretty much covers everything? Yeah. That's it. When you really think about it. Right. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Everything we do. We need to do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, how many know there's a lot of things we wouldn't be doing if, if we did everything in the name of the Lord Jesus? Huh? Amen. I said, Amen. amen. All right. So we also know in Ephesians chapter five twenty, uh, the sister quoted it, Sister Karen, I think. She said, "Give thanks unto that name in all things. Give thanks amen. in the name of Jesus." Hallelujah. But the early church understood this. They didn't pray as much as we think. They just exercised authority in the name. Look at Acts chapter 3. Very, very familiar portion of Scripture. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour, a certain man laid from his mother's womb was carried when they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask all of them that entered into the temple. Now you have to understand something. This guy was there every day. Yeah. Every day. Right. Every day. Everybody say every day. Every day. All his life. And he had one of those coats that you're supposed to get from the government, you know. That's what they give you a coat so that you, 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 they knew you were really crippled because people, there's a lot of calm people. So he sat there. Everybody knew him. Everybody went to the tent. They all knew him. Peter knew him. John knew him. Jesus went by. He didn't even heal him. Somehow he missed Jesus. You know, he did. And so he's there. <clears throat> now a lot of people say things, silly things, you know, like, well, Peter was poor. And all these disciples were poor. But Peter wasn't poor. He owns fishing boats. I imagine that this man had received some money from both of those guys before in his life. Maybe a lot. Some of those guys in San Francisco that do this going to be pulling down a couple hundred thousand a year. Yeah. I've watched some of these guys, especially the Bushman. He's good at that if he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just sits behind those bushes. You ever been to San Francisco down to work? He gets behind those bushes and then all of a sudden, you know, and different guys, and they freak out and they get money. Wow. <laughs> How much money did they get? Well, I watched that for about an hour. It had to be a couple hundred dollars at least. I think he did that long enough all day long. He's probably got a big old house up on the hill. You know, amen. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's sitting there who's seen, verse 3, who's seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, when John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto him, expecting to receive something of him. Yeah. Then Peter said, silver, gold I do not have. I left my visa card home. Yeah. Right? 
But he said, such as I have, I give you. In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. As much as, as such as I am, that's what I give you. In the name, I have that name, I possess that name, we have that name. Now, as the New Testament church, we have the name. And he says, you don't need that money anymore. He says, we got that something that's better than money. We got the name. And you're going to get new legs. And when you get new legs, you can start walking and you don't have to beg anymore. Amen. Yeah. Wouldn't it be so great if California would have such a revival that everybody would get off disability and welfare? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That would be something. Yeah. Everywhere you look, people that were on disability, all of a sudden, bam, they're being healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, it's not working that way so far. A lot of folks like to be yeah. given checks that way. Yeah. You know, sitting at home. I'm a, I could tell something's changing in California. Wow, Jesus. I was driving down the road, so when I looked at this thing, I go, it's none of your never. The problem is, a lot of these people that are driving crazy now are older folks. Yeah. Yeah. Medical marijuana is kicking in all over the yeah. place. <laughs> Seventy-year-old grandma is floating around on that mud all day. Oh, that's a real hell of a Everybody's saying the name. Acts chapter 16. They used the name. Notice they didn't pray for him. They commanded him to be healed in the name. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. It came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Brought her masters much came by soothsaying. The same came and followed Paul. And us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God to show you to you the way of salvation. But it bugged Paul, look at verse 18. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I heard of the Spirit, I command thee, what? In the name. In the name. In the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. Got him in trouble. They ended up in jail because of the use of the name. That little gal there is famous. She was a famous in history. The, 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 the Oracle of Delphi, they used to have these, they, they would, they, there's this long tunnel you went down to get a word from these prophetesses, or, or false prophets. And she would, she would squat up in the corner, really weird, squat down, and then she would give you some kind of prophecy. Then a lot of money was coming in. These people that controlled her they were getting big, they would, they'd get offerings when they, would got, when they got their prophecy. And these guys were getting rich. One time, in the name of Jesus, ruined their whole business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stirred up the whole city. The whole city got stirred up about this thing. Everybody say, in the name. Amen. How many of you know we're supposed to cast out devils? Amen. In the name. Go to Acts chapter 2. Praise God. So you got healing in that name? Huh? Amen. You got deliverance? In that name, <coughs> from evil spirits, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. There's, there's suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind through the hall the whole place where they were sitting. There appeared unto them open tongues as a fire set upon each of them. And they were all baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says they all started speaking with tongues as the Spirit gave them the Yeah. But if you skip down, listen to notice this. If you look down, I caught on to this early in my Christian life. If you go down to verse 37, speaking of this experience here. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent, you baptize every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children, to as many as, as are far off, even as many as the Lord shall love. That's good. How do we receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Through his name. Yeah. You know, I've had a whole lot of Pentecostal people telling me, you can't, what you're doing is not scriptural. I go, what do you mean? Well, you get people saved, and then you get them filled with the Holy Ghost immediately. That, they, they need to get cleaned up. 
I said, how much, how many, I said, how, how more clean can you get from going through the name? Amen. Wow. Word. <coughs> Where they're missing it is they don't, they're getting the cart before the horse. They're, they're trying to get you over here to where they think somehow you're good enough in God's eyes to get something that God's going to give you that you need to get better. Well, you get that. What it is, is, you know, I mean, hey, somebody says, well, you know, just if, <coughs> sister, if you'll just, you know, take that makeup off, <laughs> Jesus will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Nothing to do with anything. Yeah. I say, keep the makeup on. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Do it in Jesus' name, too. We <laughs> put it on using the name of Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Some of those people, man, I mean, I don't know, there's a few of them still around. They scare me. <laughs> Church with Dr. E. I went to church with Shirley Caesar. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, this church has some music. <laughs> Talk about music. You make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Unfortunately, they didn't have any word. It was a big old honking church. Way too big for my taste. I mean, it had thousands of people. You know, and the pastors weren't real wise. The reason I say that is because they would do weird stuff. I don't like them when people do this. In this day and age, I don't like when people do this. Yes, everybody lay hands on everybody. You know what I'm talking about? You don't know who's in the crowd like that. The thing's huge. You can have Wendy the Witch next to you. Serious? You don't know who's there, right? We need to, we need to think about some of these things. Now, if you have a small congregation, you know everybody who's there. That's one thing. But this thing was like giganto. No pastor could know everybody in there, you know? So I'm thinking, one day I'm sitting there, now, I didn't know anything. I'm, I'm just, you know, just, I didn't ever been to church. Like most, a lot of you grew up in church. Sometimes in church, not of me. <laughs> so I'm just all new to this. And, and the pastor gets up there and he says this. <clears throat> well, today I feel that, you know, if, you, if God uses you and healing, come on up here. I'm going to have you stand in front. We're going to have everybody that needs healing come down in a big line. We're going to have these people are going to lay hands on you. And we're going to receive healing. Now that's okay. You know all the people that are praying for you. We do that here. But they know who we are. Right? But you don't just call everybody up. <laughs> I mean, I would. Right? So here we are. And I said, well, you know, I've been on the streets. I've been seeing all kinds of miracles, wild stuff happen. Folks got to go. My friends would call me up. Come over here, man. I got a demon guy. The guy in the corner's got a demon. I go, we'll cast the demon out. And they go, we tried, but it's not coming out of it. How long have you been working at it? Three days. I said, what's wrong with you, you knuckleheads? Call me at 1230 at night. How many ever been woke up out of the deep sleep at 1230 at night? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Terrible. Ridiculous. So I get up and go over there. I go up. I, get, I, I, I walk up. In the name. In the name of Jesus. Come out. <laughs> I walked back and went back to bed. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with it? Well, you see, they just didn't understand the power of the name. They didn't understand the authority we have in that name. Huh? But I wasn't a preacher. Not yet. I was a street preacher. There you go. I had all kinds of things happen. So I went up. I've seen people here before. So I went up. I'm standing there. It's really weird. And I'm standing there in my blue jeans, my t shirt. That would be too weird now. But back then it was weird for people who wear blue jeans to church and a t shirt. Right? All these deacons, now they're whoever they were. They had six hundred dollar suits on, with big old ties and everything. They're looking at me like, who are you? But we can ask the person who should be up here. <laughs> Most people are coming down and they're like, they're praying for them in Jesus or whatever. And just, you know, nothing's happening. They get down there, they're going in Jesus then. <laughs> And there's a big old pile of people piling them all up right here. So there's actually, that's no accident. Because I knew the power there was in there. Yeah. It'd go real big there. I never, asked, I, never was, I never asked to go preach. Amen? Another time, I remember, I remember this specifically. I was standing out in the foyer at the uh, J.C. Hall church that was going on there, and a guy came up to me, hey, I need healing, and I just said, in the name of Jesus, when I said that, fire came out of my hand, hit in a pole cocking right there on the ground. I saw it. You see, there's something about that name. There's something about that name. It's the name of Jesus that does it. Everything that works for us works because of that Wonderful name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I said hallelujah. Yes. So, what else do we need? We've got the name works for salvation. Right? Works for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Works for healing. 
works for deliverance from evil spirits? Huh? Well, I can show you where the Bible says we're sanctified through that. Hallelujah. I get everything we get comes because, hallelujah, we've been baptized into that. That name belongs to us. That's the name we suffer. His name is Jesus. Wow. 